What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. The United States has a growing homo problem. There were no homos when I was young, and now they are everywhere. So, I wanted to address this crisis that the United States of North America is facing. First, some numbers. By actual count and observation, 715 people have never had pizza with pineapple on top. One of them turned out to be a homo. Out of 2,640 people who have had pizza with pineapple on top, six of them, six, were later discovered to be homos. This is shocking, shocking. That means out of 3,355 people counted, seven of them were homos. And it appears that pizza with pineapple on top is a major cause. Something clearly must, must be, be, be done. 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 Dr. Paul here. People are asking me, what is your book about? That's a good question. Basically, America's children are not as healthy as they used to be. Indeed, and we even know why. There are not enough physicians out there. There is not enough doctor's office. There's not enough medical care out there to meet the increased population demand. This is why the health of human beings in the United States has been declining per capita. If we wanted to turn this around, we just need more doctors. We need better health care. We need affordable health care. People 50 years ago could actually afford to see a doctor. Tens of millions of people in the United States cannot afford that these days. This is why. Has absolutely nothing at all, by the way, to do with pineapple on pizza. When I grew up, I don't recall a single child with autism, ADHD. I remember one child my entire childhood who had asthma. When I was growing up, there were only 28 asteroids. When I was a little kid, there were no homos at all. Now, with the advent of pineapple on pizza, it's an epidemic. Ah. Anecdotes are not evidence of anything. Let's have this clown produce hard numbers supported by evidence, i.e. real data, showing that back when he was a little kid, there were very few or no people who were autistic or had asthma or eczema Anecdotes utterly worthless. Ah. Why is it that me, this person right here, who shovels horse poop for a living, knows this and a pediatrician does not? How does someone explain that? How is that even possible this person could be a pediatrician? Continuing. I don't remember seeing anybody with eczema. And now as a pediatrician in the United States of America, I am seeing one in 50 children autistic. Before I came working here on this cattle ranch, I didn't see any roosters at all, let alone hear any. Now that I'm a cow hand on a cattle ranch with chickens, I'm seeing a hell of a lot more roosters bellowing and screaming, interrupting my sleep. How does one explain that? Pizza with pineapple on it. The list goes on and on. Our kids just aren't as healthy as they used to be. And so, as you start to ponder as a pediatrician, why? There's no need for pediatricians to ponder why, because the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have already explained why. Kids these days cannot afford medical care. 
What is going on? That's exactly what the doctor, <laughs> that's exactly what the vaccine friendly plan will do for you. It will give you a roadmap from the time you're pregnant all the way through the teenage years. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have already done that. You can even download it for free off of their website. No reason to buy this clown's, not this clown, but that clown's book. Why mention autism and ADHD and neurological developmental disorders and shit like that and vaccines? Would it not make just as much sense to mention pineapple on pizza? How to make the right decisions so you minimize the chance that your child ends up with autism, ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, asthma, diabetes, seizure disorders. Good bloody gods. There's two ways, Mr. Doctor, two, to limit the risk of having those developmental disorders. Number one, do not have children. Do not reproduce. Number two, do not have those disorders yourself before reproducing. Arrgh! Those disorders, overwhelmingly heritable. If daddy has autism, there's a really, really, really good chance little Johnny will have autism. If daddy has ADHD, uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorders and shit, Little Johnny is very likely to have that also, and also little Susie. Uh, autism is generally paternal, goes down you know, the male lineages. From 83% to 90%, depending on the studies. Autism, genetic. The rest, epigenetic. The age of the father, the health of the mother, and air pollution are the epigenetic factors for autism. Vaccines are not. The schedule for vaccines are not. Hmm. I feel better now. I'm not saying I will prevent all these conditions, but I am saying the guidelines in this book will significantly reduce the chance of your child ending up with many of these conditions. No, none of those conditions have anything at all to do with vaccines, let alone the schedule for vaccines. If this clown really believed that, he would produce evidence. Instead of writing a book, he would write a science paper subjected to a peer-reviewed science journal for referee and publication and become world famous. Everybody would be mentioning his name. Everybody would want to go see this person, consult this person. He would have more business than he could possibly do and he probably would also win a Nobel Prize. Instead, he's selling a book. Vaccines cause autism in exactly the same way. Pineapple on pizza causes homosexuality. No difference at all. You must be thinking to yourself, that's ridiculous. How could that be? Must I? No. I think that this clown is evil. I think he is unethical. I think he is immoral. I think that his bizarre and totally false assertions are going to cause great suffering that will not necessarily have to have happened if some poor bastard out there read his book and said, oh, well, I'm going to delay vaccinating my little darling and then just hope that Preventable diseases won't come and maim or kill my little darling before the next scheduled vaccine. How could somebody do that? How could somebody write this book 
that this clown has done, saying, oh, the Centers for Disease Control schedule is wrong. I'm going to write a book and say, you know, get these vaccines, but then hold off, you know, until later so that little Susie and little Johnny will not be protected by some easily preventable diseases and just keep fingers crossed that some diseased little playmate might come along and kill all my little darlings, or worse, maim them. We'll just keep our fingers crossed because this clown wrote a book. Words do not describe the outrage I feel on people like this who should be at the very least, lose their license to practice medicine. At the very least! Or, if he is correct, he needs to write a paper, submit it to a science journal, and get criticized, and then sway all of the world's experts, and then, then, write the book. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.